The most threatening drift that a teen can make is the drift in doctrine. Satan's most effective tool at hammering down our doctrinal beliefs is the contemporary movement. Many anchorless teens have drifted down the slippery slope of the contemporary slide that's wet with watered-down Christianity. The drift is not necessarily rooted in a hatred for God, but rather a legitimate attempt to enjoy their approach to his worship. Many Christians and churches are flocking in the contemporary direction in an attempt to make God fun or more accessible, as if he needs our sugar coating to be accepted by the world. The contemporary movement, quite simply defined, is a comfort-focused Christianity that conforms itself for cultural appeal. To be contemporary means to have Christianity that is modified to fit what appeals to the flesh with a goal of mixing Jesus with the world's approach. This brings a perceived enhancement to church gatherings. Worship teams have begun to add a little beat to their music while electric guitars stir up the spirit in the auditorium. Youth leaders can hold meetings in ripped skinny jeans while referencing Hollywood more than the Bible. Pastors can focus on a feel-good message of prosperity and love without once covering the doctrine of hellfire and salvation from it. The ESV, the NIV, the MSG, and the projector screen have all become more important than the King James Bible. The focus is taken away from salvation and placed on humorous illustrations and being accepting of this worldly nation. This movement is being pushed in an effort to grow churches, increase outreach, and include the world. Speaking against sin has become offensive. Conviction seems to be illegal. Standards have become cultish, and soul winning has become rude and invasive. But what's so bad about this contemporary style of worship? I mean, the crowds are bigger. The spirit is energetic. More people are hearing about God. And most of the people seem pretty genuine. But what does God think? I mean, isn't he happy that people are hearing about him by any means necessary? Truly, it's not at all about what we want. It's about what God wants. The issue is mixing fleshly satisfaction with spiritual satisfaction. When a teenager begins a Christian walk that places even some of the focus on the flesh, the Spirit of God is quenched. We're not unreasonable here. We understand that it's impossible to serve God 100% of the time. However, in the house of God, He should be the only one we're focused on. It is impossible to serve the flesh in God. It is impossible to serve the flesh and God. Romans 8.8 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. As cut and dry as that is, here's another one. Romans 8.6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Maybe you're not convinced. Check out Galatians 5.16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You may wonder why your church leaders fight to keep the standards where they should be. You may wonder why your pastor keeps preaching on soul winning. You may wonder why the music needs to be so carefully chosen, but the Bible is very black and white. There's no in between. You're either worshiping God, or you're worshiping yourself. But where does this all come from? I mean, why the sudden replacement of God's spirit with the world's methods? Well, the answer is simple. Romans 8, 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. I mean, let's be honest. The real reason teens run to the relaxation of loose standards, electric music, and soft sermons is because they're more focused on pleasing their flesh than pleasing their spirit. What are you trying to please today? Are your standards based in comfort or conviction? 
It's much easier to sit in a soft contemporary ministry, but God has called us to mortify the flesh and pursue the pleasing of the Spirit. This pursuit will keep us from drifting. Don't be a drifter. Stay the course. Continue to do what pleases the Spirit. I'm going to ask our young men to get in place for the giveaway right now. And while they're doing that, I want everybody's attention right up front. These driftwood segments were designed to hit areas where we are seeing teenagers drift. Just drift. When it comes to this idea of the contemporary movement, the soft sermons, the, the Hollywood look in the churches... These churches are filling with people just a little older than you who who are walking away from the type of churches they were raised in. And listen to me, you're never going to convince me that God's honored with that, that God's pleased with that. We need a generation of, of Baptist young people that will accept the fact that God calls us peculiar and that will be anchored in it. And stop running to something that faith church, love church, hope church, whatever, that that looks like the world. We we need that. I'm going to pass something out right now. Guys, are we ready? This This is divine. And I want you to get this. I believe God orchestrated this giveaway. All month of, the whole month of June... Uh, with the exception of a week that I was with our teenagers, I was preaching at camps and, and uh, different places across the country. And uh, everywhere that I went, youth pastors and pastors were bringing something up to me. They said, Brother Judah, have you noticed the increase in social drinking? Social drinking. And I, and I, I didn't. I, I hadn't noticed it. Except for the fact that everywhere I went, pastors are telling me stories how good men in their church are are getting disgruntled, leaving, going to a contemporary church. Next thing you know, they're drinking alcohol and justifying it with the Bible. You know, I don't know if you caught what it said there, but this contemporary movement, this, this is a slippery slope. You'll find yourself doing crazy things that you never would have dreamed of doing while you sat at a youth conference like this. Things like drinking alcohol in church and saying it's all right. I heard this for weeks and then uh, I got in Brother Eddie Lapina's truck and and he was taking me to the airport and he said, he said, hey uh, Abdel, he said, have you ever read Johnny Pope's devotion on why it's biblically wrong to drink alcohol? And I had read it but when he said that It just clicked. He said, I'm thinking about giving it away at youth conference. I said, Brother Eddie, I think that's the Lord. Our young people need to be taught again why it's wrong. Alcohol is a sin against... Look, listen, drinking alcohol is a sin against God. God doesn't want you to look at it, touch it, or even sell it, let alone drink it. And yet these contemporary churches, they're, they're all about, well, you can drink in moderation, you can, you know, and they, they twist the Bible to justify it. And we're going to give you a booklet right now, and we want you to read it. Youth pastors, I'm going to ask every youth leader to stand up, just the youth leader, stand up where you're at. Ushers, come forward. Uh, give them a stack for their group. We have enough for everybody in this conference what the Bible says about drinking alcohol. Every youth worker. Young people, you, you may think, you may think, what, what's, what's the big deal? The big deal is these churches that appeal to your flesh with their music, they change your doctrine. They change your doctrine on core things like this right here. And this is, a, this is a, a debated issue in our churches right now. And we want to give you some facts and some knowledge on this subject.